Hi there, gentlemen, Jim to Taylor here. Hey, Victoria Baylor, dressmaker. I'm going to give you a shout out the way my husband says it to my daughter. All right, good morning. Good to see you guys. <laughs> That's her little hello. Uh, we're excited to have you as part of another weekly show. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me. I think I might be a little sleep deprived. I have not been drinking, so if my speech slurs, it's not because of that fact. I just need to be working too much. But glad to have you here. Today marks August 3rd. And mm -hmm. we are, as promised, we are launching our troubleshooting series for the month of August all month long. That means every show, every, every show is going to deal with solving some sewing problems. That's right. Is that right? That's why you guys have to contact us on the challenges that you're having with sewing. That's why we're putting together for next year a troubleshooting tool where That's we're right. going to go to certain destinations and hold three-day workshops, all-day workshops. All day. For those, and we're going to cover all of these little problems where you could see it up close and personal, and you'll get a chance to share in the correction of these things. Absolutely. And by that time, we would have launched, we have a lot of other courses in the workings mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So if you want to cop those, get those, review those, that's even better. Yeah. And it helps you, it might iron out some of those. Yeah problems, yeah. issues you might be having, and then by the time you see us, you'll just bring your, you know, whatever that's that it. main issue is, because we want it. you to get there, you yeah, know what I mean, yeah. so. You got to get this, guys, you got to right. get this. That's right, we want to make it simple for you. So today we're going to cover three different topics, mm -hmm. really simple. Mm -hmm. You guys have written in, and thank you to everybody who left their comments underneath our last week's video. Um, I don't have your name per se, I'd like to give props to the people who actually submit the questions, but I was rushing today. But, but you anyway, know who you, are. you know who you are, and everyone who reads the questions will know who you are too underneath our last mm -hmm. video. So we're going to cover three quick topics today. One is someone had a question about thimbles, how to purchase some thimbles or where to purchase thimbles mm -hmm. that are have a open the end, have the hole Those in Those are it. called a tailless thimble. That's right. What's the advantage? So I normally use like the traditional one, my mm -hmm. finger sweats to pieces, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> I've okay. started using those. A lot of people have always asked me this through the years, and I'm going to give you a quick why it is. The clothes thimble, matter of fact, these are your two thing. traditional thimbles that are used. One has a hole in it, you can see right through it, and one is closed off, it's capped off. Now, it's a sweat box. Reason why. <laughs> reason why and I'm going to show you guys how to put them on your finger keep them on your finger too because a lot of people have them where they turn their hand over and they fall off oh yeah I'm okay sweating and everything. number one this was always a traditional thimble used in the industry by mainly dressmakers and I say that because this is what was what what was now the one with the top on it was made that way because most women sew and they push the needle from the front. Mm -hmm. I do it, yeah. So that's why this is capped off. Mm -hmm. The tail is thimble because there's a tailor with the hole in it. When we put it on, we don't the push side. from the front, we push from the side. Yep. Mm -hmm. right? Now, we could, I could do the same thing with this one too because sometimes I use this one, I still push from the side. It just became habit of pushing from the side. See, we hold a needle and we push it from the side, mm -hmm. like so. Whereas a lot of dressmakers, they hold it, they hold a needle, but they push it from the top. From the top. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons. Now, the best way to have it stay on your hand, because sometimes you have it on your hand, you turn it over, and it falls off. Yeah. Okay. Now. You've heard me talk in the past of why I wash my hands so much, keep my hands clean because I go, I even go to my mouth a lot, you know. So you want to, really want to have clean hands. Well, the best way to keep a thimble on your finger, whether it's the closed in or the one with the hole, is moisten your finger, stick it on. Nature's sealant. On. That's right. Nature's glue there. It's right there. Saliva. <laughs> It'll stay right on. See, it will not. You have to pull it off. Once you moisten your finger, it'll stay on. Now, I do have a question. I actually did not look this up, so I'm going to ask Mr. Jim myself. I have seen, of course, metal thimbles. We all have. Mm -hmm. But they also make all types of thimbles. Oh, they make yes. a lot of, like, you know, animal leather, hot. Yeah. All kind of I wonder things. how comfortable the leather ones well, are. Well, you know I've something? I've never tried those. I've seen one. I had one once upon a time. 
I couldn't sew on a regular basis with one of those. That's just what I got to have it. And the reason why a lot of times we use a thimble is to push through. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you more need than anything else. Oh, yeah. Secondly, you will, and I've seen this, I've had too many people working with me and for me through the years where that back of that needle, that blunt in the needle will puncture a hole a in there. Yeah, I have. And I've one. seen people get an infection in their yeah. finger. Thank God I didn't get that. From yeah. that needle. Yeah. That's why I always use a thimble. I tell my students, now mm -hmm. they don't always do that, but eventually, the more hand sewing that you get into, the more pricks you get in your finger, exactly. oh, you'll learn to use the thimble there. Absolutely. See? And I think you had asked me where some people said you could get Oh, this yeah. Kind. Some people are interested in where to buy. This type of thimble, you know, this type you can get just about anywhere. They come in metal, plastic, with whatever. the dollar store, okay. yeah. This you have to get at a tailoring supply house. Now, there are several of them out there. You can look up tailor supply. Don't just look up sewing supply. Yeah. Look for tailoring supply and they'll show you and they come in different sizes. Now, needless to say, you really don't know what size finger you it is. It's not a ring size. No. You know. They're not that expensive. If you have them, some of them have what size they are in them. Mm -hmm. See? Now most of the time your tailors, it has it on there. Now this one happens to have it on here. This is a size four. See, on the tail symbols, <coughs> excuse me, they put it right on there. And they might even have a sizing chart if you get like a they, tailor's they, manual. They might, they careful. might. So, mm -hmm. it, I know it's on these because the sizing is on these. I don't really know. I don't see one on this thimble here. It's so standard. Yeah. You know, it's just a standard one. But, you know, if, you, if you're in a place where you can try one on your finger, you just do that. Yeah. But, these, if you order it, they're ordered by size. And I can say, this is a size four. I know they go from three to whatever size. And they have bigger ones because, needless to say, for tailors, a man has a wider finger yeah. than a lady does. She has a more of a pointier finger. Mm -hmm. So they have to have it because it needs to get on your finger and it needs to fit on it. Mm -hmm. See? So you and can be secure get, and stay. Yes, in this yeah. way you can feel it. You need to be able to feel it. So mm -hmm. that's okay. that. That's right. There All you go. Right. Troubleshooting. So again, if you're not using one, they're very helpful for hand sewing. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. I used to puncture my finger all the time. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. put yourself in that position. Uh, the second thing, well, second and third thing we're going to discuss is um, a wonderful watcher. I actually wanted to know how to downsize pants if they had pleats in it for, I think, a man. Maybe take a, an inch and a quarter out of the waist and at the same time streamline the leg. So we'll talk about the sequence in which to do those things and how far and how, you know, how far to go down with that and some things to keep in mind for that. But if you want to see specific information on yeah. how to do that, Mr. Jim did do a pants fitting course. So you can actually see that and we'll post that below too. And then finally, we'll touch on the topic of how to deal with someone. We have our dress form here how to deal with a situation where um, someone's wearing a garment that has an upper uh, bagginess, kind of yeah. like an upper region. Excess, excess, excess fabric. fabric. Yeah, yeah, fabric in the re upper region. Um, how to deal with that and how to make those changes on a pattern. So right. we'll talk right. about that now. Right. Well, let's mainly let me start with the pants because you brought that one up. Yeah. We're going that order there. On a pants pattern. And mind you, this is with pleats. This and the what, legs need to be taken. What, so how do you take in the okay. waistline? Here's what happens. Here's what happens when you have pleats. You will have to, to get rid of the pleats, mm -hmm. you will really have to take the pocket out. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll you have to take the everything. pocket out. Yeah. Now, once again, where the pocket was on the physical pocket bag, the whole bag with the facings, the punctuations, the holes are going to be there. Mm -hmm. You're going to create a new line here to, to where it goes. To, right? mm -hmm. Now, how far down the leg? Normally, when you put pleats in pants, you have to put enough fullness on the side of the pants. And I showed that in my pants uh, fitting uh, uh, download that we have. That's right, the, my, course. the course on how mm -hmm. we how we design this to start with. Mm -hmm. That's on there with the pleats. Now, if you're going to remove them, you have to physically open the side of your pants. You have to open the front part up to where the pleat starts or stops. 
Mm -hmm. Then you have to open enough of the backside of it to be able to make your maneuvering. See, they put physically, and I showed that in my demonstration, we put excess material here so that when you pleat it, the pleat lays down. Now, they don't lay down perfectly because we're not built straight. That's see? Right. But you, you don't want to put the pleat in there and the pleat just opens totally up. Yeah. So the excess material allows it to roll back in and lay down smoothly. Normally, it's done and it comes down to about the knee area. That's where the fullness needs to be. Mm -hmm. So if you were taking it out and you'll need a curved stick, you'll take it out, you'll open it up, you'll take it out to where, to where the seam of the back pants connects and you'll mark that. Then you'll take away all this excess here, cut it out. Mm -hmm. So one quick way, probably mm -hmm. for someone that's a little bit challenged since you're holding the pattern is, wouldn't it be a good idea so for them to either copy the width of their pants, however oh, they want absolutely. to, relieve the pleats, and then apply mm -hmm. that width back, and then they can see the excess that needs oh, to be sure. chopped, chopped oh, sure. off, and then well, just chop that That's what off. happens when you put a marker Mm -hmm. where, where the back closes on it. Yes, but for, you yeah. know how some people will totally miss that. They'll, yeah, don't relieve yeah. the pleats until yeah. you have marked. No, right, right. Don't cut where nothing the, off. That's right. You have to put this edge back on that's right. to where it connects with the back part. That's right. Because that will be your joining part. Mm -hmm. You would automatically see if it's over here and then you have to reshape this area here. That's right. Okay. See where the notches, that shows you where the pocket sets back in. Mm -hmm. You need to have those on there too. Now right. for, uh, so... You can do this two ways. You can do this if you have a pants pattern that has pleats already kind of built into mm -hmm. it. You can take it out on the pattern level. Sure. But as Mr. Jim's explaining, he's addressing that if you have a ready-to-wear pair mm -hmm. of pants, you want to deconstruct mm -hmm. the pants, uh, make note of the width of the pants and how everything joins together before you take anything apart, where the pockets go and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Take it apart and then go back to your original widths and then grade off everything okay. else. Okay, now here's a, here's a even a better way too. Everybody didn't have plans with pleats in. You've got plans that are plain front, because mm -hmm. that's what you're creating. That's true. All you have to do is measure the width of what you already have. That's right. Measure the cross here. You know how much to take off the side. There you go. There, with your seam allowance. See, I love that. And that's one thing that we've always talked about, and Mr. Jim has tooted in some, especially his pants course. If you're in doubt on how to make something, like the sizing, the width, Refer back to something that you like to wear and then that use those well. measurements. Yeah, and that then you can you get well. rid of stuff that way. You so, know, yes. Hopefully, that answers some of it. Nothing ever answers all, all of it. No, because it's all But scenario. that gets you started in thinking on how to do it. But, like I said, if you have a pair that fits, measure it. That's why I tell people this is a game of numbers mm -hmm. rulers, tape measures, whatever it takes start there yes so with that that's how to, and then once again you graduate the leg down and the best way to do to graduate it to a good fit is have something that you like the fit is on absolutely and i didn't think just to give a heads up to your course you mentioned specifically i think it was was it around the knee region yeah. where should people start thinking about making those graduations because some people mm -hmm. get all up in the to, thigh to where the knee is that's right. usually on a pair of pants male or female where the knee area usually comes down is about 10, well, let's put it, it's somewhere between 9 and 11 inches constitutes where the knee is. Yeah. On pants. It's right in this, the knee area is right around You want to deal with where the knee area is. Usually it could be anywhere between about nine and about 11 or 12 inches down, depending on the person. That's right, if you have long femur bones or long thighs, right. it might be a little right. bit Right, it might be longer, shorter, longer, whatever, right. see. And always remember too, find a pair of pants that you like, measure the, the, the width across. Mm -hmm. Now you let that be your guide. And always remember that the front of, of the pants especially when you get down to the leg area, is always smaller than the back. That's right. And one of the reasons are, the back of the pants, for it to balance on you, you have a calf in the back of your leg. So they allow for the wraparound of that. They just don't cut both of them the exact same thing. That's right. right. 
because then the seams would pull one way because mm -hmm. standing when it hits the back of your calf muscle it'll protrude backwards mm -hmm. so the back is always a little wider so go from those use something that you have so moving very right along very good advice hopefully that helped mm -hmm. answer your question and help troubleshoot that problem uh, finally, we're going to look at dealing with excess bagginess in the upper back regions. So what he and I were talking about is there's lots of scenarios by which this can play out. Sometimes people have protruding um, uh, shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. They kind of stick out and might cause bagginess in between those shoulder blades. Some I had a client that had a slight dowager hump, so she had a little bit of humping there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, protrusion, so there's kind of lines radiating from that. Um, also, we talked about uh, having a narrow back can cause bagginess sure as can. well. Um, some other situations might cause bagginess. Well, what it, what it is is, like I explained over and over again, when manufacturers make patterns, this area, I talk, talk about it all the time, the shoulder, which is up here, is always too big. So if you use a standard size pattern, once again, I said measure your shoulder. That's right. yep. This area here, because most of the time the cap, this, this would be the cap here, is down here. Yeah. Well, if it's cool. down there, then what you get here is you get an excess of fabric. And everything is so, bowing and right. hanging on you. So when you're making it, if you have to narrow the shoulder, which is up here, you have to narrow all of that. Well, guess what? All of that creates this bagginess. Mm -hmm. Let's put this on the mannequin so we can show you what we're talking about. Yeah, that's funny. It sits. It's All right. This is the area that we're talking about. This area up in here. This is what we're talking about. People get a lot of excess here. So we'll put some simulate some bagginess right yeah. up in there. Right up in there. Yeah. Now, how you would have to eliminate that first of all is now the shoulder. Well, mm -hmm. if you now the shoulder up here, you also take this out. Mm -hmm. Well, if you take this out, it smooths the back over. That's right, it pulls it in some. Right. So, how do we start that? If you have your pattern, this is your pattern area. This is the area we're talking about right in here. If this is too big, then this is too big. So, if you narrow this here, and you come down, you eliminate this section here. Mm -hmm. Now, when you eliminate this section here, you have to eliminate some of this here too, because it's a continuous flow to That's get right. it back in there. So if you take some off of here, you have to change and take some off of there. Now this would be on your pattern, whether it's a man's shirt, a woman's blouse, this is the same area. And then this is a jacket pattern too, right? This is a jacket pattern. So you really pattern, can't see part of the, it's the yeah, same, same difference. Same but, principle. Yeah, but you can't see the armhole, so don't be distracted right. the fact that this because juts the, out the, the Yeah, angle. the back gets connected on. Yeah, yeah, you but know. if this did have the curvature of the arm aside, mm -hmm. you would have mm -hmm. to carve that out as well. Okay, now, here's another way where you can take a little of this out. Mm -hmm. If it's on the fold. Which is very nice. See, where right this is middle, here. Yep. Okay. You overshift the top part and you slant it down a little in here, overshift it off of your pattern. Mm -hmm. So you eliminate this. Now you don't want to take the whole thing down mm -hmm. unless the whole pattern is too big. That's right. See? But you can always adjust. This is easier to adjust if it's still too full. Mm -hmm. Just overshift it from the edge. If, if the uh, fabric fold is here, Instead of putting it here this way, over shift it and take some out. That's right. Now, that's a good thing for women's blouse patterns. Why? Because once again, they always make the neckline a little bit too, too big too. And if it's a dress and you have that seam go all the mm -hmm. way down and you notice you need to take it in, you can take it in that center, the, the specified amount, yeah. and then add on the side seams to get the fullness if you still go. need it in the hips. 
And one thing we want to recommend is if you're not really good at a point where you can expertly work on, like as Mr. Jim and I always suggest, do your measurements, apply, measure yourself, apply those to your pattern. Well, then make you a mock-up, a muslin sample, yeah. and then there, look at where you see a radiation of wrinkles. Yeah. If you see that just excess, go in with your pen and go do your tuck. Or like you said, if, if you notice a radiating there, yeah. do your tuck around your arm, your shoulder, and then pull it through your armhole, and you'll see where your yeah, it'll, fabric it'll automatically moves. will come over. And it'll give you an idea of where the problem is stemming from, because you're right, sometimes there's a lot of solutions. There's several different back alterations. You can oh, do yeah. a back alteration yeah. that is almost like a, a vertical tuck all the way through to shorten up in here. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's too much excess up there, you can do mm -hmm tucks that radiate from the shoulder, shoulder. seam down you midpoint. put a dart up there. There's a dart. So there's darts, tucks, all there's all kinds, kinds of ways to kind of finagle yeah. stuff. So you want to kind of be, sometimes in a muslin it's really easy to see where those. It's, it's better, those, it's better to use some, some type of mock-up than cut into your goods. I know that's right. Because once you cut into your goods, you cut into your goods. And fitting someone's back can be very complex, especially if you're doing it by yourself, yeah. which is one of the reasons why I bought a custom-made dress form that was made to my body mm -hmm. specifications, because I could go in and do that. But if you can't do that or you don't want to do that, well, then get someone to either take a picture, or if you have a friend that can fit that sews, that's yeah. great. But get, get someone to take a picture of your back, and then you can kind of analyze your wrinkles. If they're coming like they're radiating out the side, you might think, oh, okay, well, let's see if we push this over this way and what happens to that fabric. So a lot of it is a little bit intuitive, just yeah, recognizing yeah. the wrinkles and, like you said, mm -hmm. figuring out if you change one spot, you need to change, change. something yeah. else. Can't you just, just can't change. change one little no, place. No, you got to see how everything no. flows together. A lot of times on both men's shirts and women's blouses, this yoke, if you measure the person's back from the tuck part, which this is part of up under here, across, it'll give you the distance of the yoke. Now, if you have the pattern, the pattern's going to be laid out. If your measurement is here, that's, where, that's how wide the yoke should be. Yeah. But their, their yoke might come very wide. And then well, if it comes very wide, then the width of the back comes very wide. And like how it's sitting on this dress room, mm -hmm. you'll end up with that effect. It's yeah. just drooping. It just droops. So you get all of this. So all this swing in. Whereas if it fits properly mm. and it's taken in properly, it fits, it nice fits and across it. Yeah. So we hope that kind of clears up some ideas yeah. on how to deal with shifting fabric, excess yeah. fabric. Yeah. You want to kind of think your way through yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So keep sending in your suggestions because we want to yes. try and we want to try and cover as many. Now you have to understand that we we're trying to cover them briefly to give you an idea on how to attack them. That's right. To see it totally, well, that's just a little different there. Yes. That's why we're putting together the tour, so we can yeah. make this really happen in front of you, and you get a chance to do this. So stay in touch with you, with us. You know, We're glad to answer questions that we can. That's right. But like anything else, on the show, we can only give you an outline of it. There. That's right. And hopefully you can take that and kind of play with it. That's right, because a lot of times it isn't really a direct line. You mm -hmm. want to kind of think your mm -hmm. way through. It's not, it's not, everything's not a quick, easy fix, no. but if you kind of, some of what you, we said today pinpointed some good ideas, go. I hope it gives you a great lead to find your solution. So, at any rate, gentlemen, Jim the Taylor here, signing off. Victoria Baylor Dressmaker, send us those questions, post them underneath this video. In the meantime, have a wonderful week. Use your God-given yeah. gifts to bless someone else's life. We love you guys and see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye now.